Okay, so I'm Ross Langston and today we're going to go through a simple tutorial of electron shell configurations. Now this tutorial is intended for students that are in basic biology classes such as Biology 100 or are taking human anatomy and physiology. It's not really intended for people that are taking a chemistry class. So in this little tutorial, you're going to learn how to uh, determine how many electrons go into each shell, what the electron shell configuration will look like, and whether or not an atom of a particular element is likely to form uh, molecules or compounds. So first, let's start out with hydrogen. Here we have the periodic symbol for hydrogen, H, and we know that the top number there, the whole number, is something called the atomic number. The atomic number is actually the number of protons that, that atom has, but because the number of protons and number of electrons is equal for most atoms, we can also infer that it's the number of electrons. So hydrogen has one electron, and that one electron fits in the first shell, and there it is. Now, you should know from your lecture class that the first shell can hold two electrons. So right now we have one electron in the first shell, whereas it can hold two. So the question is, is hydrogen happy? Well, the answer is it's not. Hydrogen is not happy. It's not stable because it doesn't have two electrons in its outer shell. What it would rather have is two electrons. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to come over here and we're going to paste in another hydrogen. There we go. And if we spin that around, and we share these two electrons. These two electrons spend time going around this hydrogen and then the other hydrogen, and this is called covalent bonding. So in this way, it makes both hydrogens more stable. So we've taken two individual atoms of hydrogen and then formed uh, what we can call hydrogen gas, or H2. Okay, now let's take a look at helium. Helium has an atomic number of two. That's the whole number up there. And so I know that it has two electrons. And we can fit two electrons in that first shell. So I'm going to get rid of the other two shells. So I simply go up here and put electron there. And I put an electron there. So this is what the electron shell configuration looks like for helium. It has two protons, which are in the nucleus, and two electrons, which are occupying that first shell. So the question is, is helium happy? Is it stable? Yes, absolutely, helium is stable. It has two electrons in the first shell, which is this outer shell or valence shell, so it's com completely happy and stable. Helium, as it turns out, is one of those gases we call a noble gas. And we call it a noble gas because it is very stable and very unlikely to form molecules or compounds with other atoms. Now let's take a look at oxygen. So oxygen up here has an atomic number of eight. And remember that tells us the number of protons as well as the number of electrons. So first of all, let's look at the first shell. We take two of those electrons and assign them to the first shell. Remember, the first shell can only hold two electrons, so that's two. And how many electrons do I have left over? Well, I have six. Well, six electrons are left, and I know that the first or the second shell can hold a maximum of eight electrons, so I don't need a third shell here. So I take uh, eight minus two, and that's six. So I start putting up my six electrons, two, three, four. I show them in pairs just for ease, identifying where I need an electron. So you can see that all the electrons are paired except for right here. So uh, we have six electrons in the outer shell. Oxygen is not stable. It doesn't have eight. It doesn't meet the octet rule. If we have any shell beyond the first shell, we generally want eight electrons. So how can I get eight electrons? Well, I can go share electrons with other atoms, and let's do that now. So let's throw in there some hydrogen. So here's a hydrogen, let's spin it around. And hydrogen, if you remember, had one electron. And so if I throw in that hydrogen, and I throw in another hydrogen, uh, basically what can happen is that I can form uh, a covalent bond between hydrogen and oxygen. Here we have a molecule of water. So what we can see now is there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons in that outer shell of oxygen. And there appears to be two electrons in the outer shell of hydrogen. Remember, these electrons are spinning around very, very quickly, spinning sometime around hydrogen, sometime around oxygen. So water is much more stable than either hydrogen or oxygen by itself. Okay, now let's take a look at carbon. Carbon has the atomic number of six. Again, that means we have six electrons and six protons. So we assign two electrons to go in that first shell. Okay. And then we know that uh, six minus two is four. So we have four electrons going to the second shell. So I still don't need a third shell. So here we're gonna go. I'm gonna add one, two, three, and then four. And there we know that we have a total of six electrons. And we know that carbon's probably not going to be stable or happy because it doesn't have eight electrons in that second or valence shell. 
So how many more electrons does it need? Well, it needs four more. How do we get four more? We bring in another atom, again, like hydrogen here. And so we form up, there's one hydrogen. Uh, let's throw in another one, we'll spin that around. And then another hydrogen, and we'll spin that around too. So what we're doing here is sharing electrons between hydrogen and between carbon in order to stabilize uh, these two atoms uh, and make them more stable. And in the process, we formed uh, basically a, a compound. The compound here is CH4 or methane. So we can see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons in the outer shell of carbon. And because they're being shared, it looks like we have two electrons each in both of our hydrogens or all four of our hydrogens. So basically all hydrogens and the carbon is more stable than they were by themselves because they're sharing electrons and forming a covalent bond. Okay, now let's take a look at silicon. Silicon has the atomic number of 14, so that's rather large now. So remember that two electrons go in the first shell, so we'll do that. And that leaves us 12 additional electrons or 12 remaining electrons. And then we're going to have um, eight electrons go in the second shell. So I'm going to do it real quick. So we've now got eight electrons in the second shell, two electrons in the first shell. So together that's 10 electrons. So 14 electrons total, I still need four more electrons. And those go in the third shell. So one, two, three, four. Okay, so the question is, uh, is silicon stable? Uh, no, it's not. It doesn't have eight in that outer shell. Now, if you've studied your chemistry, you say, Dr. Langston, the, the third shell there doesn't hold eight, it actually holds 18. But that's divided into different orbitals and it's getting a little too complex for this class. But suffice it to say, if we hit eight, chances are that uh, element is gonna be more stable or that atom's gonna be more stable. So once again, we can bring in something like other, uh, uh, other atoms such as hydrogen or something like that um, or other things like that. So silicon needs to bind to four other atoms in order to be happy, uh, just like carbon. Okay, finally, let's take a look at argon. So argon has 18 electrons, and we remember that uh, 18, two go in the first shell, and then we're gonna drag, whoops, come back here. And then we're gonna drag uh, another um, eight into the second shell. So one, two, three, four, five, So there we are, eight plus two is 10. How many do we have left over? Well, we have eight left over, and I'm just gonna copy these electrons from over here and see if I can move them out to the other shell. Okay, so let's see if this works. Okay, put up two electrons there, move these two here. Oops, that's not, that's not right. And you'll go there, you'll go there, and then you will go there. So that's what it looks like. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in the outer shell, eight in the interior shell, that's 16, and then two in the very, very inner shell, that's 18. Now, because we have eight electrons in that valence shell, even though it can hold more, uh, this atom is very stable. And argon, just like helium, is one of the noble gases. It does not associate with other atoms. It is very stable and therefore very unlikely to form compounds or molecules with other atoms. So the big picture here is the number up top is the atomic number. It tells you the number of protons and usually the number of electrons, unless we're talking about an ion. Uh, the number down here is the atomic mass, and we're not really concerned with that in determining whether or not uh, something will form a bond with other atoms. So we're just interested in the number of electrons. The first shell there can hold two. The second and third shells uh, are happiest when they have eight. So eight is the number we're trying to get to with that octet rule. Uh, we either want two in the first shell and that's it, or we want eight in the second or third shell, whatever shell is the valence or outer shell.